Yes. A uh, very good evening to one and all present here. Uh, for this 14-day faculty develop international level faculty development program. So today here with us our resource person. So that we are very much thankful for you, sir, for accepting the invitation to uh, proceed this faculty development program. Uh, let me go for the introduction right now. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Piyush Sharan, sir, Associate Professor, Manav Rachna University, Saradabad, Haryana. In 2010, sir completed his B.Tech ECE in Integral University, Lucknow. In 2010, sir completed his M.Tech Wireless Communication. In 2017, sir completed his MBA in Pondicherry University. In 2020, sir completed his PhD in Integral University, Lucknow. In 2012 itself, sir started his career as an assistant professor in Integral University, Lucknow. Then served as a university uh, position and coordinator, I mean, a Swayam coordinator for three years in Lucknow. Sir authored five books, published around 40 journals in journals of high repute. Sir is a life member of IEI, IEA, ENG, ISTE, and IEEE. Sir received the senior uh, member award by IEEE, also awarded the chartered engineer by the Institution of Engineers. Let me invite our speaker to deliver the lecture. Sir, please. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your kind words and uh, a brief introduction about me. And it is a pleasure having you all. And uh, thank you for inviting me in this 14-day international FDP. Uh, without wasting much time, I would like to start with my presentation today. And uh, I think my screen is already visible. And should I? No, it is not. Let you me share start. my screen once yes. again. Yeah. OK. Is the screen visible now? Yes, sir. OK, so today's topic is on development of course on Moodle. Uh, I have prepared this course for the faculty development program on integrating cutting edge technical tools for enhanced research and te teaching excellence. So basically, now we are since we are in the 21st century and we are targeting uh, outcome based education. We are uh, targeting our students for blended learning and we have found new pedagogical ways to convey our uh, knowledge and uh, we want to convey our knowledge to them in an efficient manner. So uh, we have a latest tool that is uh, that can help us in achieving that. And uh, most of us are already working in this on this platform, on this tool and creating uh, OERs, open education resources. So this uh, tool is very much useful for uh, uh, student centric learning and as well as reducing much of the uh, teacher uh, ability. It reduces effort in the manner that we are now available for much other works that we are given time to time. Uh, like we are involved in uh, NAC accreditations, NBA, uh, sometimes ABIT also, and we are doing a lot of documentation work. So it sometimes becomes difficult to. Uh, uh, take all the classes regularly. And so that is why Moodle creates a, a benchmark through it. And we are able to uh, communicate our lectures and uh, deliver our uh, knowledge database to our students in an efficient manner. So let's get ahead of it. Uh, the contents for today's presentation would be uh, why it, it is necessary to adapt uh, to Moodle. What are the different teaching methods that are there now, uh, the, or how it is different from the conventional teaching practices that earlier we used to do. Uh, what is a flipped classroom? What is Moodle? What are the various platforms that Moodle uh, supports? Creation of a Moodle site. We'll be doing a hands-on practice. Uh, how site, site administration settings can be done. What are course categories? How to create course category? Creation of a course adding learning materials and e-content. Uh, we'll be doing uh, adding an activity also like quiz or assignments. And we'll see how it looks after the creation of that course so that we can achieve these set goals, the, the learning outcomes. OK, so let's move ahead. Let's start with the definition of learning. So what is learning? What do we interpret by the word learning? It is a process that leads to change. 
learning is a process of bringing out certain desired behavioral changes in an individual the expected goal of a curriculum in terms of demonstrable skills or knowledge is termed as learning objectives learning outcomes are the observable and measurable and product end product of learning it is observable indicators of objectives so in the 21st century we need a flipped classroom why because where does a teacher stands today uh, when a lot of available e content ppts videos mooc courses are there available online so a uh, uh, for powerpoint presentation we have slide share for videos we have nptel and youtube as a platform for mooc courses for massive open online courses we have khan academy coursera edx as our tools on which uh, we can find uh, oers open education resources for which we can opt for learning anytime anywhere so ubiquitous learning is there at all times and you can start learning any day you want to start a topic uh, students also uh, want to dodge themselves from uh, boring lectures and uh, they are not much keen to sit in the class and learn and listen to a particular lecture instead they want to get themselves involved in doing some activity or another uh, if uh, also nep also uh, encourages us uh, as teachers to incorporate um, blended learning or activity ba based learning or active learning uh, in our classrooms so uh, it becomes Uh, easier when we use flip classroom as a methodology uh, as a teaching pedagogy we have different pedagogies with us like uh, we have think pair share uh, we have jigsaw and we have uh, act, uh, project based learning and many others so all sorts of pedagogies can be used right now uh, in this era of uh, education uh, less time for higher order thinking in class because uh, students face that uh, their uh, learning is limited they are not given enough approach enough time to for higher order thinking and uh, they are uh, st they are still stuck to the remember and the uh, understand level of the bloom's taxonomy uh, and they are not able to uh, go up to the higher order thinking of create and evaluate okay so they can analyze by their uh, learning they can analyze they can do analysis but they cannot create or think beyond the box okay so now this kind of pedagogy can introduce uh, thinking beyond the box and also uh, talking about this remember understand skills remember is uh, according to the bloom's taxonomy remember is just the level 1 so uh, students can define a problem uh, define a uh, uh, you know concept they can recall a concept they can list some certain items but cannot judge whether uh, in what situation that will create an issue and uh, what can be a particular uh, solution to a problem a complex problem so analysis and application up to this level we can go in our regular classrooms but to reach up to the higher order thinking to create to design to build to plan to produce and devise we need a different kind of pedagogy in the traditional model teachers introduce new materials to students and uh, like a concept is being taught in the class and they are given higher order thinking skills for homework okay in the traditional classroom but in the uh, flip model we are giving this introduction for homework we give the study material beforehand before coming to the classroom the homework is that they go to the new concept by the uh, videos by watching videos or by e learning materials and then complex problems can be uh, dealt in the class in a group where teachers and students both involve themselves in solving complex problems so basic concept should be taught uh, as a homework and then complex problems can be dealt in the class so that's flipped classroom so this is the traditional model when students had to hear to a lecture and then a lot of homework was given earlier but now homework is just to listen to the lecture at home and then uh, apply the learning into the classroom with the help of a instructor okay so this is flipped model uh, out of class activity learning objectives of lower level 
remember understand apply this should be the uh, homework for uh, in the flip classroom strategies um, provide study material outside classroom you can give research papers book chapters ppts videos animations for students to go through when they are at the comfort of their home and when they come to the class they should be uh, analyzing complex problems evaluating solutions creating new solutions uh, provide uh, the approach of tps think pair share like it's a pedagogy then peer interaction peer uh, instructions peer instruction activities inside the classroom should be done higher order assignments of complex and long answer questions can be dealt in the class lower order questions can be given for homework like multiple choice questions one line answer questions simple questions based on the concept that can be given as a assignment for home but inside the class we should be doing all this okay so there are certain tools for out of the class activities uh, earlier there were limited papers and books and uh, ppts but now there there are videos we have integrated all three in through a google drive we can share it with the students uh, and in, in a document file uh, through a wordpress wordpress site drupal is another uh, site for sharing resources with the students we have moocs courses you know, on edx coursera and moodle platform now moodle comes in two different platforms one is the moodle cloud and the other one is the genomeo for uh, evaluation tools it's uh, written misprint here uh, assignment can be in the form of written google form you can evaluate the students on based on written assignments and google form quizzes in the form of uh, digital uh, quizzes okay so what is the meaning of moodle so let's start with the moodle meaning it is modular object oriented dynamic learning environment okay so this is the full form of moodle modular object oriented dynamic learning environment and moodle is a free and open source software learning management system written in php moodle was originally developed by martin uh, dojia mas in uh, 2002 uh, Moodle is used for blended learning, distance education, flipped classroom, e-learning. Moodle current version available is three point four, three point eleven also by now. I think this is some old slide. Uh, you can create your own Moodle course using Moodle Cloud or Genomeo, a learning management system that enables educators to create their own private course. That is Moodle, and you can also um, monetize it. uh so some if your courses are unique and you have created something of your own your uh, unique uh, abilities are there and you have curated a particular content from the internet also and giving uh, credits to the owners so if you have created a certain course online you can also monetize it so you you can also get benefited uh apart from teaching students online uh which is our prime objective you can also sell it to other learners who are outside the university premises and you can also invite them to learn and they can also earn certification based on the completion criteria of the course that you have designed on moodle so popular moodle platforms is genomeo uh, up to 500 users are free moodle cloud uh, moodle cloud is up to 50 users that are free here now everybody is having a payment plan play pay as you go you can opt for a site at genomeo or at moodle cloud or at canvas for a certain amount of payment on monthly basis and uh, you can go up to 5000 users as much as you want and you can increase after that also if you have a good database of students learning your course so let's do a small activity just scan this qr code and uh, let us see what is the 21st century pedagogical tools available uh, or pedagogy in fact i should ask you what are the uh, 21st century pedagogies that you are using or we should be using at this point of time uh, because of the effect of or impact of technology uh, amongst us so i request all the participants to scan this qr code and uh, just share your views on this just 2 minutes i'll take uh let me stop my sharing and let's go to the were you able to uh, scan this qr code
name a few teaching pedagogies you know as a teacher of the 21st century i request all participants to scan and uh, send their answers i hope all the participants are doing that Uh, yes sir okay okay just name a few pedagogies that you can uh, you should be using by now in your classrooms okay we'll see the responses after some time i am receiving some responses participants please uh, actively participate in this activity just scan this qr code that is uh, available here and just yes so let's read a few concept map gamification flip classroom think pair share gamma app uh, i don't know about that activity based learning collaborative approach good collaborative approach flip classroom think pair share all these are activities uh any other critical thinking critical thinking can be incorporated with the activity so uh, you can incorporate using any activity like think pair share is uh, can be used with the to achieve this uh, and any more answers learn just learn okay are you able to see this uh, word cloud all of you Are you okay, very good. Okay, Kahoot is also good. Kahoot is a online learning tool where you can. It's like a gamification. Yeah, gamification. Everybody is writing. Game fixation. Flip class. Okay. integrative pedagogical models okay okay project based learning yes so we have introduced also project based learning and we are evaluating now uh, students are different going in a different scenario we are um, as per the nep we are incorporating project based learning now and uh, we are evaluating these projects on various rubrics okay so we have predefined rubrics and uh, starting from the very first phase like ideation so on the basis of the idea of their project only we are giving them marks so it is just from the inception of what project the student is going to make or complete we are giving marks based on that so even from the very first stage just uh, giving their idea on what the project they want to take up in future we are giving them marks and we are awarding them for their um, out the classroom thinking okay so project based learning the best approach right now we are also incorporating in our colleges and university level and um, especially in the engineering now if you won't believe like uh, subjects like digital electronics and microcontrollers we are not offering in regular course method we are using project based learning in that so we have defined some rubrics uh, how they are how these projects can help into society how it is mapped with any of the sdgs sustainable development goals and uh, based on that we are giving them marks okay so let's come back to the slide we have very well defined the pedagogies now uh, the first thing that we need to do on any moodle for creation of a site we should go to this site uh, you can choose any of the sites either you can use genomio or moodle moodle cloud 
So on Moodle.com, you can start your trial by clicking on this button. It will take you to this page uh, Moodle on Moodle Cloud. Now you have to create, uh, choose a site name. Suppose uh, you can uh, choose rajkumar.moodle.cloud, sorry, moodlecloud.com and uh, or um, any other name, say um, Mr. Yo Dr. Yoganand, uh, you can use your name, any name you can give to your site and choose a password and password should be uh, like first letter should be, or any letter can be a uppercase, mixed case and uh, special characters and numerals. You can use all these to create a password. Then uh, you should choose your server region because all this is based on cloud. So you can choose either Australia, US or Ireland. We have three mm -hmm. um, server uh, zones where you can select. Uh, how will you use your site? So it will ask you a question like uh, whether you, you want to use it for a academic purpose, for research purpose. You should clear your purpose and uh, then certain details are required to fill and you can you are good to go then after that and it, you can choose the plan as free trial 50 users it will give you 250 mb of storage and that is available for 28 days so if you want to use it beyond that you will have to buy a plan um, and the plans are uh, like based on monthly basis are also there and on an annual basis you can also buy that plans so once you've created your uh, site, uh, as I have created on my, uh, as piyushcharan.moodlecloud.com. So once you log in it with the admin mm -hmm. credentials, you will see a site administration icon or a tab here on the top. Uh, we have four uh, tabs here, home, dashboard, my courses and site administration. So you have to set, uh, you have to do a certain settings on your site. So all the settings that are available here are on the site administration. Once you go on the site administration, you have tabs like general users, courses, grades, plugins, appearance, server reports, development. So general is very general settings that you have to make in your site, like putting a photo on your profile or any other settings. And you, have, you can create uh, your users manually and through certain tools that can be used. Like if you have a comma separated value spreadsheet, you can use that. Um, you just need the first name, last name, and the email address. And uh, I think one or two things are required more like roll number or registration number uh, in a, in the, from the college where the student is studying. And under the courses category, click on the courses to manage courses and categories. So. To create a course, you have to select uh, this icon, the first icon, manage courses and categories. And you can create a course and a category for the same. Suppose you want a course for UG, but for B, uh, level one, level one means first year students, level two means second year. And you can, you can name anything. I just named level one, two, and three. You can name it any way you want to say first year, mm -hmm. second year, third year, or anyways. So this is where you can create categories and courses here. We'll do a live demo of it also. So uh, when you add some activity in modules, so you add it, uh, you have to click on the edit mode here. You see here, there is an edit mode. Once you go into the edit mode, you have to pull this uh, button uh, on the right side and uh, you are good to go to edit your uh, tools. Uh, your activities or the week plans that you have made and you can create a course that way let's quickly hop into an activity let's do it uh, live okay so uh, if you see when you go to the dashboard this is the course that i have created it's a value-added course on circuit simulation using pspice so don't go into the detail because the crowd here is a mixed background. So uh, this is basically electronics and electrical students use PSPICE as a tool. Uh, so what you want to offer, you can create in this course page. So collapse all. So 
this is the very basic setting that you will see here. This is the course insider. And this is the general settings. This is where you can put uh, your software requirements if it is there. You can make some announcements in the group. Uh, those students, if you make any announcement, all the students in your uh, course or participants will receive your regular assignments. Then I wanted the students to install this uh, software also. So I've given this software as a, uh, as a file here, as a zip file. They can simply uh, unzip the contents in a folder and then use the readme.txt file inside the uh, you know uh, extracted files and you have to just follow the instructions to so, uh, install the software. So, and this is the evaluated course syllabus. I can, I have given a syllabus here, which students can go about uh, defining, clearly defining what are the course outcomes, how it will map with your employability skill development. Okay. Uh, what are the structure of the course, like one hour of uh, lecture and two hours of hands-on. Okay. Total credits are two. Uh, so it will be having 30 hours total of course duration, one hour lecture plus two hands on, uh, two hour hands on for 10 weeks. So what are the contents of the uh, course unit wise? I have given them full details and any reference books you want them to follow. You can ask, always give some reference books or textbooks. And this is the course articulation matrix that you have to prepare according to the uh, in it varies from co college to college, universities to universities. So we have 12 POs in our uh, uh, BTEC and uh, we have program specific outcomes. So we have two PSOs, program specific outcomes for which we want to um, map our course with. So we map our course. PO5 generally represents a tool, a modern tool that you have used. So since we are using PSPICE as a modern tool uh, from ORCAD, so we are giving it a high level. So it's uh, strong here, 333. Three, three. So this is how we design the syllabus. And uh, let's go back to the course. And you can give any instructions here you want to on this uh, general tab. Then once the student has done reading all or uh, installing the software, you can always, uh, uh, like uh, in the edit mode, let's go to the edit mode. I've just uh, clicked on it and it has the slider has gone to the right and it comes to the edit mode. Now you are in the edit mode. You are the course administrator. You can edit any portion. So in the settings of this particular like piece by software edit settings, you can go to the edit settings and you can give instructions. You can name the title of your um field uh, or whatever i you are placing here as a document okay and you can give instructions description and the file you can upload it from your uh, systems and it will be available online on the cloud server uh, you can also give completion conditions here the students must manually mark the activity as done or we can add requirements also that view the activities, the at least viewing will mark the activity as complete. Okay. If we, if the student has viewed this activity, then it has, it will be marked as complete. So even if the student just once clicks it, it will start uh, installing, it will start downloading from the server, the zip file, and then you can do it later on. You can install it. So by this way, we can, uh, monitor the students uh, accessibility with the course also whether they are accessing the course or not so now it's changed to done you must view it at least okay uh, students can manually mark as done if you have selected mark as done in the settings if you are marking as done so students will manually mark the checkbox that they have read and gone through it uh, gone through the syllabus and uh, uh, completion conditions, you have written that students must manually mark the activity as done. So they are given some options like this. And it's up to the instructor that they can 
give any kind of instructions. So here I have added a image. You can use this tool uh, of image and you can uh, browse your repositories. You can choose any image file, attach image files from anywhere you want to. So these are certain files that I have uh, gathered for this presentation. And we have, I have put my own course. Uh, actually, I'm taking this course right now. Uh, and I've created this Moodle just for the presentation only for the sake of giving, uh, disseminating the knowledge on how to create a course. Okay, so this is how you just save and display. You have to click on save and display and it will be displayed like this. Go to VAC EC013. That is the small code that you are giving here. Uh, let me show you if I want to create another course. This is a sample course. You can also go through it. I'll give you a password and a username with which you can browse through and go through the course elements. And uh, let's create a new course. This was already created, so you won't be able to uh, identify how to create a course. So go to the site administration. Click on the courses tab. Go to manage courses and categories. Here you can see that under the undergraduate courses, you have created a tab called value added courses. And under the value added course, there is a course here. And the under the value added courses is value added course on circuit simulation using PSPICE. Okay, so this is how you know there are courses available in this particular category. So if you want to create a new category, so click on create new category. And I don't want to, it to be in the under the value added courses. So I will select here on the top. I want it to be on the top and let this category be postgraduate courses. Okay. Uh, just that create category and you will see that it will create another category. It is on the top now postgraduate courses. Just like undergraduate courses, it is postgraduate courses. So you can also change the position, make it to the top and above. You can place it above uh, undergraduate courses by just moving it up like this and it will move up. Okay. By the arrow only, you can move up and down. So if you want to create another category now, now I want to create a subcategory. So I want to create a subcategory for postgraduate courses now. So now parent category is postgraduate courses and I will create a new subcategory under this. So let's create a course on advanced. Uh, oh, sorry. In fact, uh, I should write mtech. Okay. Just name the program. You can name a program like for, for mtech you are planning these courses. So this is a category. So mtech. And you can also create subcategory of mtech also like first year and second year. Okay. So let's create category here. Now you will see that the mtech is under the postgraduate courses. Okay. And in the undergraduate courses, there is value added courses. You can create subcategories in undergraduate courses as BTEC, BCom, BSc, and uh, endless number of possibilities are there. Okay. And you can design courses based on the requirements of that particular program or curriculum. So um, once you are done with the creation of the categories, now I want to create a new course. So I'll go back to the, okay. In this category, mtech, I want to create a new course. Okay, I'll click on create new course. And I will name, you can see the category here is postgraduate courses slash mtech. So it is going into the subcategory of mtech. It will it'll be part of the postgraduate courses under the mtech uh, subcategory and this course will be created as uh, say advanced microprocessors and microcontrollers you can uh, give uh, a short 
course code name, uh, course short name, like uh, you can give AMM as also a name or also the course code. So we give course code like this ECH518B. So this is a course code and you can uh, give the course start date. So let the course starts at 1st of, you know, of January and it uh, ends on the 30th of June. 2024 so for six months you have created a course okay here you can write a description this course is about uh, advanced microcontrollers and microprocessors and you can use an image file for that course like i have used one in the previous course that i have prepared for this uh, presentation you can click here and then just save and display so this course has been created now now you get uh, a general tab again this is empty right now you can add activities like uh, a file uh, a discussion forum where participants can introduce themselves by giving a short video presentation or just writing about themselves like they are from what is their name, which background they are from, what was their last percentage, uh, what are their qualifications and else. So in, in the discussion forum, you can ask all these details about the participants where participants will be able to know each other. So that is there. They are always uh, discussion forums can be helpful in peer learning. Also, you can uh, post open questions here uh, in this particular forum, and uh, you can ask them to at least write one review or start a new discussion uh, in this forum. So that can be given as a restriction to move ahead in the course. So unless and until they post a new discussion forum question or answer and answer a, a, a certain query in the discussion forum, they cannot move ahead in second module or third module. According to your settings, whatever you want uh, settings there in the course. So that ways it can go. Uh, you can also add a, a file as a PDF of uh, the syllabus and you can add some software requirements just like I have given some software through this file. You can also share YouTube videos or videos on other platforms through URL. You can create a quiz. You can create an assignment. All these are predefined here in this uh, modules. Uh, then you can change the topic, say, suppose, basics of 8051. Sorry, 8051. Okay, so this topic will be renamed. Then you can add some settings. Like this will be a module one. How do you want to restrict the access? If you want to add restriction, uh, like if somebody has not introduced themselves in the discussion forum, so you can create a restriction. Uh, uh, date or grade. Actually, I have not added any uh, activity. That's why it is not showing that activity. Otherwise, it would be, have been here only in, the, in this section. So I'll show you how it is done in my existing course. So you can rename all the topics with the basically the units of the course and or the module. Uh, you, have, you must be having some module names for each of the topics here. So you can replace the names and you can add activity or resources to create a course. Let's uh, go back to the dashboard. Let's see how dashboard looks like after creation of two courses. So now you can see there are two courses. Earlier there was just one. Now there are two courses. Now it also shows in which category or subcategory this particular course is created. So it is created under the MTech tab. And this one is created in the value added course for UG. Okay. So let's go into this course.
and uh, let's see the first module we click the edit mode that means we are not editing now we are just going to the module one so once you can create a setting for module one also like uh, you can only move to module two once the disco the discussion forum activity in module one is completed and you can create a sequence in which the activity should be done you can also create uh, uh, like restriction for quiz that the if the reading material has not been accessed and the software has not been installed until then quiz one should not be opened for the student so the deadline is also coming before 27th so if the student skips reading it or does not download the reading material or does not download the software then you can still control that the student should not be able to access the quiz after the quiz has been completed then only discussion forum can be accessed you can put restrictions for that also each activity can be restricted and you you have to watch this video also and once the video is viewed completely or uh, at least say 5 10 minutes you have viewed then only you can move to module 2 you can add any number of instructions any number of restrictions for students for uh, traversing or accessing this course so let's see what are the reading material for module 1 so the reading material also reads the syllabus of unit 1 say introduction to peace pies overview of the peace pies software you can click this link and again the download will start because this is hyperlinked with this activity peace pies software so if you click this the software will again download from here also and if you click this reading material you will be able to download the pdf which has been shared for under the module 1 so basically this is a <clears throat> lab manual sort of a document where students can see what kind of circuits they have to analyze or for the course like they have to access and write the code in the uh, pspice for transient analysis of low pass rc filter using a step input or a pulse input so pwl is the uh, syntax for giving a step input it stands for pspice linear i'm not going to the technical terms of this but uh, just to give a brief idea so this one is pulse input so all sorts of coding and uh, results and lab manual sort of thing can be given to students to read and they can perform the experiment on their own uh, so learning material what you are learn uh, what you are sharing in your uh, course that is very important uh, and then uh so you have to ask students to uh, perform that on their systems and prepare a report on that so once the students submit the report you can also add an assignment uh, you can rename it as say let's add an assignment only so it will you will be able to understand how to create an assignment here so we are again in the edit mode we have to just drag this button here and by clicking this button we get into the edit mode and let's uh, add an activity so it says add an activity or resource so let's add an activity of assignment and say we are saying that lab report based on module 1 we just type this and we describe it as submit uh you can add instruction in the description here complete this activity by 26th feb in 2024 and you can write an activity instruction like um submit the report based on module 1 of the course completing all the experiments experiments of this section okay 
and you can ask them to submit. Uh, you can uh, also share additional files. If you have created a PDF of your assignment, you can put here uh, in this assignment, uh, in this additional files, if you want to. This is optional. You can create an assignment on uh, and convert it into PDF file, and you can also upload it here. Then you have given a start time, allow submissions from 24th Feb and due date. Due date is 26th. So you can change the timing and 27th Feb, you can say 27th Feb, zero hours. That means up to 12 a.m. midnight in on 27th. That means full 26th, they can uh, up to 11.59 p.m. They can submit their assignments, okay? Uh, you can choose this, uh, what is the number of uploaded files, 20, or you can make it just limited to one. You can make just one submission, single submission, and you can also give them a size of say one MB. And you can, uh, if you buy the soft, uh, the paid version, you will be able to give them access up to 10 MB or say up to that level of data you can up, get upload from your students. So accepted file types. So you can choose them to uh, do document files, document files. You click on document files and you give them option of PDF or Word document, docx, okay? Either PDF or Word. So in both format, they can submit. But I prefer only PDF only because it, that reduces the uh, file size also. Save changes and you can save and display. Click on save and display and it is done. Okay, so lab report based on module one. So this activity gets added to the uh, module one. After video one, this lab report based on module one is the activity that is added. And you will always see this, uh, that the submissions are open and the due date is 27th Feb. So all the students will be able to visible, uh, view that. Okay, it will be visible to all students. Then a model two, similarly, you can create model two, three, and uh, four. And you can give a final wrap up assignment in module four, in which you can give restrictions that you can add up to, uh, any number of assignments, uh, any number of assignments of previous modules, like uh, you want to give a feedback also. If you want a feedback from students, you can create a feedback activity, which can, uh, which you can use as a restriction for the final wrap up assignment. That means the students will only be able to give the final exam if they have finished submitting the feedbacks. Once the feedbacks is received, this will be visible to them and they can access the final wrap up assignment and they can complete the course by 1st March 2024. So this is how you design a course and we have to, uh, you know, at each level think of what course outcomes you have already decided about your course. Based on that, you have to add activities, discussion forums, video lectures, you know, uh, it should be learner centric materials. So it should be based on uh, LCM standards who, uh, that are learner centric MOOC standards and it should be four quadrant as per the UGC and AICT. So what are the four quadrants? Uh, one is the LBD, uh, le learning dialogue, LEDs, learning dialogues, then learning by doing some activities should also be there. Learning extension trajectories, some learning resources you should be given should be giving them and uh, uh, there is one more i am forgetting it lxi learning learner experience interactions lxis so these four quadrants should be met in our courses so whenever we design a course on uh, a moodle platform or any sort of mooc we are developing we should think of all those four parameters and we design the course according to that uh, with this i want to share you my courses like this is one a sample course that you can access as a student so you have to just click on uh, the school.moodle.moodledemo.net school.moodledemo.net this is the website web url 
you can use the username student and moodle to log in just click on this tab here login and username student and moodle you can access any there are certain courses there you can access how the courses final view can be seen and then i have given my own course uh, this is my moodle website moodlecloud.com usern.moodle.cloud.com you can give a username student and the password is a student at 123 uh please make sure that the cap x here is in capitals it's in cap lock it's in upper case student at 123 you can access this course and uh, you can just make a go through the course material that is there available so that way is, that brings us to the end of this uh, presentation now i open the house for any kind of questions and answer if any participant has any query dear participants if there are any questions please post within the chat box dear participants uh, is okay, is it is it there the chat box yes the chat box is open okay. okay okay actually this is one of the newest experience for us sir because uh, we usually just uh, are thinking some other uh, icd tools and uh, a kind of things only which was going so goes on but today it was a uh, thing like uh, e content development in that case we just uh, gone through today so uh, right so now, is, is it your first experience is it the first time that you are learning yeah, about this module for me it's first experience sir I'm oh telling you yes sir because uh, that is case, uh, that has amazed me in fact because i thought this is not a new topic for maybe uh, learners may not be uh, like interested in this but uh, it, <laughs> actually really being amazing. a chemist uh, yeah we people are uh, chemist uh, maximum people uh, will be there as a chemist we people are not explore uh, that much level for the e content at all but at all sir but this is the kind of thing uh, which is really new to us and new to me especially <laughs> i'm just looking at this uh, because these thing kind of things we have seen in nptel like we would yeah, have been yeah, yeah. the course and we will be attending we have not created yes, anything yes. <laughs> so it's a kind of thing which just no gone. no uh, there is a there is a platform called oe for bw it's open education for better world they uh, take proposals in the month of november for creating your own course so now you can also develop your own course just give them a proposal and uh, they will evaluate your project and once you get selected you they will give you a mentor also who will guide you constantly for creation of that particular oer so um i am also doing one um, uh, oer project right now okay. i am okay. uh, i am developing a course on e waste management oh great okay. sir yeah yeah so i'm doing that and uh, my mentor is uh, also from south of india she is uh, a freelancer right now she's working okay yes. and uh, yeah sushamna dr uh, sushamna rao oh, she's yes. a, uh, she's well into this uh, oer creations she has been working in this for the past i think 4 5 years uh creation of oers online on moodle so that's really amazing and this is a very huge verse you can go and enter into this at any point of time in your life when you're thinking that you can uh, create a course of your own or you want to create your interactive books now she's working with the interactive books now this is a different uh, domain where you can yes. create a book that can be interactive you can you can share it with your students and they can learn in a engaging manner so basically the idea of nep is to engage students and we are working on that area that how to engage students now learning is uh, vast uh, you can have millions of resources available online but how to engage students in the class that's the major thing okay exactly 
so some questions okay, so are there the chat wonderful box. presentation yes sir. is it similar to google classroom uh, in a way yes and in a way no also because uh, it cannot be completely google classroom is very basic you can uh, only add some video presentations or thing but you cannot orchestrate you cannot have a discussion forum in google classroom and you cannot create uh, uh say you can create assignments and quizzes but you cannot have discussion forums and uh, also you can give constructive feedbacks to students uh feedbacks can be also live and can also be you can take some time and evaluate your students assignments and quizzes and you can give them feedbacks later on also so i hope it answers to miss maya does it have a copyright site yes it does have a copyright site and you should have proper licensing before using any material from the internet uh, make sure that you have a cc by sa license uh, it's a uh, copyright protected and you can share alike okay is it freely available or paid one uh it's freely available for 28 days and after that it is paid so you have to have a subscription uh, there are some platforms which offers it for free also uh, but i think it's canvas but not it was earlier free when uh, it was in the covid time when i learned about it uh, in 2018 19 I, i started learning about it and we extensively used in 2020 when covid was there so we had extensively used it as a institutional lms we used um, in our institution uh, we have a i was working with integral university that time and we had an lms of our own it was named uh, integral learning initiative so it was ili acronym ili uh, do we need any credentials sir to create any course uh yes you have to register your own site if you are creating a course for uh, your students you can create uh, you have to have a credential and uh, obviously you will have to create your own site and then you can share that course you have created with your students uh any other question <coughs> okay well we could see a lot of appreciation as we said like uh... somewhat uh, new to the people like uh, science background people like uh, that's what uh, we just uh, wonder with this uh, kind of lectures uh, it's we are really thankful to the convener because convener madam yeah, only yeah. Actually, actually madam uh, today uh, she she's out of station so that's what uh, okay okay join uh, right now where actually one is, such one, one such presentation or workshop she has attended with me and then she came to know about me and she offered me a lecture here in this so it was good it was a good experience with you people yes sir uh thank you so much thank you all yes sir in this case uh, yes sir in this case i think uh, only the appreciations are there uh, question question conclude then shall we conclude the program sir yeah I, if i'm it's okay from my side yeah ah uh, yes yes dear thank you so much sir thank you so much for the wonderful presentation given in the day 12 session 2 because morning also we had a session uh, morning also we we had a this much of uh, uh, quantity were there uh, as a participant now also we are having this much of quantity that much of interest people are showing towards this kind of new technologies into the teaching field anyway uh, we are really thankful to you sir because uh, you have just opened it's sort of eye opener this is the eye opening okay. session for the people who are not by the science background so okay, okay. Uh, really thankful uh, the pleasure is all mine sir it's good to have uh, sharing my knowledge with you and it was a great experience thank you yes, so sir. much yes sir if time can i have the recording of this lecture also later on sure sir sure sure yes sir oh, yes, thank sir. you thank you so much thank you yes sir if time permits if you are being in chennai let us uh, meet on day sir in our camp yeah sure definitely definitely yes sir okay. thank you so much sir okay bye bye take care all bye, of sir. you bye sir uh thank you so much dear participants uh the post uh, uh, i mean uh, the chat box we could see the feedback link we will meet you on monday
the meeting will be closed within 2 minutes